Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. In the name of procrastination, join us. Tomorrow. What percentage of the time do you find yourself checking your email or browsing social media instead of completing your most important yet challenging assignment for the day? Being busy isn't the same as being productive, even if it makes us feel that way. What we should be doing first and foremost is taking care of our frogs, the difficult but necessary chores that we have to complete. There are 21 strategies in Eat That Frog that can help us stop procrastinating and better manage our time. Eat a live frog in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you, Mark Twain said and you'll be fine for the rest of the day. According to author and productivity expert Brian Tracy, the frog in Mark Twain's story serves as a metaphor for the most important and difficult work we must complete each day. Our business and career performance are likely to be greatly impacted by this task. However, we are more inclined to put off the task we don't want to do, because we lack drive to get it done. When our to-do list becomes too long, it's normal to feel overwhelmed. However, by learning to eat our frogs, we can increase our productivity and pleasure. When it comes time to identify and prioritize our most repulsive amphibians, we'll briefly review some of the book's best advice. For this purpose, we will also learn how to eat procrastination and enhance our productivity. Why it's important to plan out and write down our goals, as well as the benefits of creating to-do lists, is explained. A B C D E system, posteriorities, and how to be a creative procrastinator will also be covered in this section. To begin, Arrange the dining room table. Setting the table is necessary before we can begin eating frogs. Set some objectives, as Tracy puts it. When someone says, don't simply sit there, do something, you know what they mean. The answer to reviving our productivity, though, may lie in the polar opposite, don't just do something, sit there. To put it another way, plan ahead of time before acting. Setting goals isn't a new concept, but the significance of doing so cannot be overstated. We should set our goals by imagining what our life will look like in 5, 10, or 15 years. Career, family, health, personal growth and social and community are just few of the areas in which you may focus your time and energy. Tracy advises that all we need to do is spend 30 seconds writing out three goals for each aspect of our life. Decide on a single objective that will have a big impact on your life in each domain. To paraphrase Tracy, he says, think on paper. Write things down is the most important piece of advice in this book. Writing things down on a piece of paper has been shown to increase productivity and memory retention in numerous studies. So throw out the rule book and rediscover the enchantment of paper and pen. Furthermore, our brains are meant to be used for generating ideas, not storing them. In fact, just 3% of adults write down their goals, but those who do achieve 5 to 10 times more than the rest of us, according to Tracy. Make a list of all the things you need to do to plan and accomplish your goal. Did you know that when you work from a list, your productivity increases by 25%? As a result, you should not skip it. Make a list of all the things you'll need to accomplish each goal, as well as any potential roadblocks. Take into account any obstacles, resources, and other people who can assist you in achieving your objective. This can be accomplished by asking, why hasn't this aim already been accomplished? A well-defined strategy can be developed more easily if you start at the end and work your way backwards. Having our goals and checklist in hand, it's time to prioritize what has to be accomplished. The frogs are hiding somewhere. First and foremost, Tracy's frog eating rule is, if you must eat two frogs, start with the ugliest one. Even among the most disorganized of to-do lists, frogs are adept at hiding. Identifying the tasks that will have the biggest impact on achieving our goal is therefore critical. The first step is to figure out which one this is. The following are a few of Tracy's pointers for sorting frogs from tadpoles. Incorporate the 80-20 rule. Use the A, B, C, D, and E methods to analyze the consequences of not taking action. The Pareto principle states that just 20% of all causes, or inputs, lead to 80% of the outcomes, or outputs, of any given event. As a result, we're trying to figure out which tasks have the greatest potential for productivity. Priority should be given to completing these activities. As a result, two of the ten actions on our checklist should be accomplished first in order to reap the maximum benefits. The best way to figure out which of our chores, or frogs, we need to start with is to think about what would happen if we didn't do them. What if I did nothing on my to-do list for an entire week? We must ask ourselves. What are the long-term repercussions of this? 
If I don't complete one of these unfinished chores, will my goals be derailed? We may utilize Tracy's ABCDE technique to help us prioritize our to-do list once we've done some introspection. Each activity should be assigned a letter from A to E. The letter A stands for must do chores, meaning that failure to do them will have serious implications. B stands for should do tasks, if you don't complete them, you'll face minor consequences. If we don't complete the work, there will be no consequences. C is for pleasant to do things. Duties that can be delegated, tasks that can be given to someone else in order to free up more time for tasks that can only be done by you. Also, the letter E stands for duties that we can eliminate, those that aren't really necessary to our work or our objectives. In order to move forward, we must first identify our A's, or the things most important to us, such as our ugliest frogs. Frog eating rule number two from Tracy, if you're going to eat the frog, don't just sit there and gaze at it. Eat the damn thing and be done with it, I told myself. Here are a few simple recommendations to help us stop procrastinating and get started chewing instead of putting things off. Take it slowly and savor every bite. Procrastination can be overcome by focusing on a single step that we can accomplish instead of the overwhelming task in front of us. And tale from Tracy's trip to Algeria, where he attempted to cross the Sahara Desert, is recounted. This desert was 500 miles long, with not a drop of water or food to be found. Not even a fly could be seen for miles. A wide yellow sun parking lot extended to the horizon, completely flat. The French had marked the route many years ago with 5 km distance black 55-gallon oil drums, which were precisely the horizon's distance at that curve of the earth. During the day, you could only see two oil barrels, the one you were standing next to and the one 5 km away. By tackling it one barrel at a time, Tracy believes he was able to cross the world's largest desert. If we take things one step at a time, we can complete even the most difficult tasks in our lives. It is said that the only way to get past a wall is to travel as far as your vision allows. So, what are you putting off for the rest of the day? What's the smallest thing you can do today to get your life back on track? No? Then the next day, you'll look for the second one? Another good practice is to finish each activity before moving on to the next one. Every task should be handled by a single person. When it comes to time management, single handling is one of the most powerful tools we have. In the end, our productivity is determined more by our ability to begin and accomplish our most important tasks than by any other talent. How many times have you sat down to begin a task, only to find yourself checking your email and social media accounts before you know it? Productivity suffers when people try to do too many things at once. To put it another way, our propensity to pick up, put down, and pick up again can increase the time needed to finish a task by up to 500%. We believe that being able to do it all is a badge of honor and that we are superior because of our ability to multitask. This, on the other hand, is just not true. We lose momentum every time we take a break. In order to get back to work after watching our favorite cat video, we need to review where we were and what we still need to complete. We must overcome our inertia and get back on our feet. Our ability to get into an efficient work rhythm is hindered by this. It is Tracy's belief that if we focus solely on our most important task, we can shave half or more of the time needed to finish it. First. We must get organized and then focus solely on the most important task at hand. Time chunking, preparing your workstation, and developing a sense of urgency are all ways to help. Our most important jobs sometimes necessitate long periods of uninterrupted focus. Make meetings with yourself to deal with your frogs and plan your day accordingly. Then divide the day into time blocks and stick to your schedule. In addition, we need to select times of day when our brains are at their most creative and sharpest. There are less distractions in the early morning when we're most awake and attentive, thus Tracy recommends that we employ time block intervals for focused work. Make sure your workstation is suitable to concentrating on your work. To begin a wonderful dinner, any cook understands that a well-kept kitchen with all of the necessary ingredients and utensils readily available is essential. Find a place that allows you to concentrate, make sure it's free of clutter, and make sure you have everything you need to begin and complete your activity in front of you. It is important to establish a sense of urgency as well. Despite the importance of preparing, don't wait too long to get going. We can only achieve a sense of flow if we're continually working on a project. Get in the habit of finishing what you start. Get organized, then focus on the most important frog until it's done. In the next tip, we discuss how to identify the obstacles that keep us from achieving our goals at the pace we desire. Identify and overcome the most important obstacles. These are the choke points as Tracy describes them, that prevent us from accomplishing our goals. People, our own shortcomings, and a lack of resources are all potential roadblocks. 
it's easy to place the blame for our shortcomings on circumstances beyond our control. But we can't forget about the internal elements that play a role as well. Our objective requires us to have what kinds of talents and experience? Limiting external causes is simple, addressing internal ones, on the other hand, is more difficult. It's best to focus on one stressor at a time in order to prevent becoming overwhelmed. Concentrate your efforts on a single area for growth. It's not just about focusing on our weaknesses, it's also about focusing on our strengths and crucial talents in order to put ourselves up for success. Always try to get better. To keep our talents fresh and increase our self-esteem, we should always be on the lookout for new opportunities to learn. Consider something that comes naturally to you, but may be difficult for someone else. Alternatively, consider what has assisted you in achieving your goals. A look at your strengths might help you identify areas of improvement. Although it's possible you're wondering how you might squeeze in more learning time. Easy. Make the most of your downtime. In a typical year, drivers log 500 to 1000 hours behind the wheel. The unproductive time can be used for podcasts, audiobooks, programs or language recordings, according to Tracy. These tidbits of knowledge accumulate up over time. It's a great time to write down ideas or read a book while you're waiting for someone else. We can take use of a wide range of opportunities to improve our own well-being. However, there's one more thing you need to know before you can achieve your goals. We must inspire ourselves to take action. Self-control and optimism are essential. What if I told you that you can learn to be more positive and more disciplined? How we say to ourselves has a huge impact on our emotions. As the saying goes, we are what we think, so we must cultivate a positive outlook. Positivity is contagious, and it can improve our ability to concentrate generate new ideas, and feel self-assured. We can learn to be more self-disciplined just like we can learn to be more hopeful. Discipline isn't just about getting up in the morning and getting to work, it's also about how we take care of ourselves while we're not at work so that we can be more productive when we are. We must pay attention to the emotional and physical well-being of ourselves. Our bodies are the engines that propel us forward. We are more productive when we are energized both physically and psychologically. We must be careful not to overwork ourselves just as we would with any other machine. Tracy says that after 8 hours of non-stop mental activity, our productivity begins to wane. Tracy is correct. It's important to obtain plenty of rest, sleep, and physical activity. There is no need to put an end to our procrastination just because we've learned to be more self-disciplined. The phrase creative procrastinators describes people like us. Our procrastination methods are as varied as our interests. Most of us procrastinate on critical work yet efficient people prefer to watch television. Set posteriorities, Tracy's term for the opposite of priorities, if they scare you. What can be done later or not at all? Having a positive outlook and a strong work ethic might inspire us to take action and complete the tasks at hand. To sum it up, too much to do will always be a problem. If you don't prioritize your time, you'll never have enough. Tracy's core lesson is to start with the most difficult task. Even if this advice isn't rocket science, Common sense isn't often the norm. Another thing that distinguishes Tracy's book from others on the subject of productivity is that his suggestions are grounded in his own professional experience. Brian Tracy has more than 25 million followers on various social media platforms and has written numerous books on personal improvement. Although he is known as a productivity guru, some of us may not know that Tracy had a difficult start to his career. A salesman, he recalls feeling undervalued and out of place among his colleagues. I had gotten into the trap of thinking that those who were performing better than me were genuinely doing better than me. He found out later that this was not the case. In an interview, he explains, they were just doing things differently, and what they had learned to do, I within reason could learn to do as well. As he worked his way through the ranks, he realized that the ability to concentrate single-mindedly, be on the most important task, and do it effectively, and to accomplish it entirely, this is the secret to success and achievement in all sectors of our life. So. Instead of your usual breakfast cereal, how about a box of frogs? Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.